The Lead with Courage podcast is recorded on the lands of the Yagara and Tarawal peoples. We would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and recognise their continuing connection to lands, waters and community. We pay our deepest respects to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures and to Elders past, present and emerging. Welcome to Lead with Courage the podcast that celebrates the bold and inspiring stories of people making a difference. I'm your host, Cherie Canning, and today we'd love to welcome two incredible guests to the podcast, Paula Hindle. Paula is an integrative women's health coach, physiotherapist, and yoga teacher. She founded her own business, Yummy Mummy Physio, in 2003. With an extensive experience working in the fitness industry, she has a huge vision to empower women to thrive, not just survive. And Libby Trickett, former Australian swimmer, Libby collected 24 gold medals on the international stage across Olympic, Commonwealth Games and World Champs, including four Olympic gold medals across three consecutive Olympics. Since retiring from swimming, Libby's lived many lives, currently studying a Bachelor of Counselling and co-founding with Paula, Unlocking Potential. Their goal is to inspire and empower all women to unlock their greatest potential through exercise and holistic health practices so that they can live a vibrant and purposeful life. Please note on this episode, we're going to take a pretty deep dive into some mental health topics, including suicide and postnatal depression. We hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome. Welcome to the Lead with Courage podcast. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having us. It's so exciting. We're so excited to be here. Oh, I'm just beyond excited. I'm a bit giggly. Okay, it's so great to have you both. Thank you. So I want to kick off with a really quick little intro and I'm going to ask, you know, in a couple of minutes and we'll give you a time each, but who is Paula and who is Libby? So Paula, can we kick off with you? Who is Paula Hindle? Oh, what a question to kick off with. Can't <laughs> Do I like something first? Who, Who are, are you, you, Paula? Who am I? Well, if I was speaking in my enlightened yes. <laughs> viewpoint. I am me. <laughs> I am pure energy. <laughs> pure consciousness. <laughs> Who am I? I think that is a question that just continues to evolve. You know, like years ago I would have just said, I'm Paula, I'm a physio, I'm a mum. Um now I feel like I'm just someone that is much more intuitive and I know what's in my heart and I just keep following all of those voices. That's who I am. So beautiful. Thank you. Thank oh, you. That's really cool. Yeah. No good, pressure. Good answer. No, come on. Man. <laughs> yes. And who are you? Libby Trickett. I am Libby Trickett. Hello. Hello. Um, I... <laughs> will list off the you know the names of things that I have done I used to swim a million years ago Um, I've done a whole range of different things but I think the most important thing about me is that I am someone who uh, is incredibly passionate about mental health um, and someone who wants to be able to communicate with people in a way that helps them feel better about themselves in some way so uh, I know that one of the things that Paula and I both love to do with our business, Unlock Potential, is to bring joy. We've talked yes. about it with you. Uh, we want to be chief joy officers and, um, yeah, we, we're just really passionate about bringing joy because life is hard. Mm. And so that's that's our real passion in this in this world. Amazing. CJOs, chief joy officers. Yes. CJOs. yes. So good. Beautiful. Thank you. I think what I would love, uh, I guess, not all of our audience – all five of them or however many people are going to listen. <laughs> yes. um, so it's my mum, my dad. <laughs> hey, whoever will listen. Yeah, yeah good. My mum will listen. You're great. So all <laughs> ten, thanks for, thanks for showing up for us. Uh, but they may not know, I've just said, you know, who are you? But can you give us a little bit of a background, I suppose, who you are now, CJOs of Unlocking Potential? Mm. Because, yeah, how do those paths come together? How did you guys meet? What is CJO or what is Unlocking Potential all about? Yeah, well, Libby and I met 2018, yes. is that right? Yeah. yeah, 2018. So my background is I'm a women's health physio and um, an integrative women's health physio, I guess. I've, I'm a yoga teacher, meditation teacher and a uh, health coach. So Libby came to me after the birth of her second baby um, to do return to exercise. So that's when we first met. Mm. Um 
And just over the years, we've got to know each other. She came to my yoga retreats, mm. um, did some coaching with me. And just over 12 months ago, or well, nearly 18 months ago yeah. now, um, I just, I've really had this dream for a long time of this concept of the business. And I just literally text Libby again. It's just that voice. You need to do this. Text Libby and said, hey, I think you need to do this business with me. Can we chat? And she's just Yes, straight away. <laughs> immediately. Yes, I immediately got a message back. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 one of those things, isn't it, where you might be kind of uh, rotating in each other's circles for years. Yeah, and you know, I've uh, been obsessed with Paula. She's amazing. What she does with her yoga retreats, the meditation—that's all stuff that resonated so much with me. And then, all you know, and we were close, but you know, not best friends or anything and then all of a sudden you had this idea and I was just like yeah I need to do that amazing that's that's something that I've been seeking and I want to be able to help bring into the world so so I think when we you know we'd been on obviously when I'd take retreats and I'd hear about what her new passions were and finding purpose after swimming it was it just felt so aligned. So I think that's mm. where we got to know each other quite you know, on a deep level rather than just at the gym chatting yeah. <laughs> over a barbell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, beautiful. And I think it's amazing when you talk about those circles because if I think back to when I first met you, Paula, it was also at a um, – mama's journeys the end Mm. of term for mums returning to exercise after having babies and Paula you were a speaker there and I'd never met you before but I just remember just watching you like if you know we're an audio here so people may not have seen your photo but like this Amazonian Mm. goddess (laughs) Um, and all she has a presence yes yes and compared to little shorties maybe (laughs) in particular Uh, but I was like absolutely uh in armoured is that even the word Mm. I was absolutely wowed by your presence and then your story I think of your own challenges and your own strength and instantly I'm like who is that woman I need I need to be her friend I need to know this woman genuinely and you know you and I have been the last 12 months maybe doing coaching you've been coaching me over the last Mm. 12 months which has been incredible and and I love that then when just this podcast you're our first guest on the podcast the um our women in leadership the ignite you were the first people we called and said will you guys come and speak and it I think that um spirit of just saying yes and just Mm. turning up and giving things a go is something I love about both of you and Libby I remember obviously watching you swim that's like every Australian gets that (laughs) but I remember and which is amazing I remember meeting you for the first time and felt like a bit of a mum stalker. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bit embarrassing. But uh, I think you were doing a, a walkthrough or a, a trial at a local kindergarten. Yes. And I saw you in the foyer and when you left I was like, was that was that Libby Trickett? <laughs> and the owner was like, I cannot confirm nor deny. <laughs> Like it was, and we. I think we exchanged some chat about maybe the kids being in fancy dress outfits. I'm like, oh, I just love your warmth and your energy and your smiles that the world knows. I'm like, that is everyday smile. Like that warmth was like, okay, she needs to be my friend too. Um, And so to have you two, yes, I just we feel the same about you. Absolutely, we need that little person to be our friend. Little. Only short in stature. That's about it. My husband would say, it's "Not little in uh, voice or opinion." But no, <laughs> yes, it's so it's so beautiful seeing you guys here. And maybe we'll share a bit more about unlocking potential and what you offer. And we'll talk more about, I think, the business, um, if that would be okay. But also, I think maybe a deeper dive into both of you. So when we're talking here about courage and and I guess the different themes of courage, and I've wanted to ask you, what is a story? Um, about each other, about mm. each other's courage, you think everyone needs to hear. So Libby, tell us a story of Paula's courage and vice versa that you think the world needs to hear because it's inspiring and I think by sharing these stories about ourselves or our own strength or each other's strength helps mm. others on their journey too. So as raw and real as you're willing to go, yeah, I'll hand it over. Are you comfortable with me? Yeah, go for <laughs> okay, it. I cool. was thinking the same thing. <coughs> yes, I, you know I'm comfortable. Yeah. I'm an open book. Um Paula is, I mean, as you mentioned, Paula is this, I mean, she's a glamazon. She's stunning. She's tall. She's incredibly fit. Um, and I think a lot of people 
would be incredibly intimidated by Paula. And, and which kind of bugs me, actually. <laughs> Not in a way that I'm jealous. I'm not, I'm not jealous at all. But, like, it bugs me in a way that people would judge her for how she looks and not who she is as, as a human being because she is w- one of the most, if not the most, glorious beings that I've had the privilege of, of not only getting to know but getting to work with. And she has an incredible story. Her... I feel terrible saying this, but her husband, um, Chris, uh, suicided 10 years ago this year. And uh, the courage that someone has to draw on to navigate an experience like that, not only, you know, coping with the grief and the loss and what would have been an incredibly torturous time prior yeah. to that in the lead up yeah. but also while navigating two very small children i just she she gives me goosebumps re- regularly with her strength and her courage um and you know that's that i mean that's one whole story in itself but then on top of that she is continuing to role model for her children living a life that is aligned with her values and what she believes in. Yeah. And I just I am inspired every single day that I have the opportunity to to work with this incredible woman because she, you know, she's not living a life that is risk free. Like she's not playing it safe by any stretch of the imagination playing it safe for her would have been continuing with doing her physio work and continuing to be in a clinic or be in a hospital where she that's her background but instead she's kind of gone all in on our business which you know again (laughs) no pressure (laughs) no it's terrifying you know because you know nothing is is guaranteed when you're doing a startup as you and no Sheree like it's Hard. Sorry, my my language. I don't know. Yeah, what, I think I think we're okay with language. <laughs> <laughs> we're only a new podcast. You we're can, working it out. You can bleep me. Bleep bleep. Um, but you know, that, to to go all in on that when there's no guarantees in life. But she she felt in her heart to go after this this business and this goal. Like, uh, yeah, there's nothing more inspiring than seeing that in another woman. And I, for me personally, it's. It's a funny thing because I grew up not really having a lot of close female friendships. Mm-hmm. I was much; it was much easier for me to be friends with with men or well, boys at the time. And it's only now, sort of in my mid thirties, that I'm starting to see. Are you that young? <laughs> yeah, 30, I'm thirty eight now. But it's been the last few years um, that I've realised the power of connecting with women. And the power of collaborating with women and the power of being able to accept help, accept support, accept encouragement, not be threatened, you know. I mean, I think we're going to talk about the abundance mindset, but, you know, not feeling like there's only room for one of us. Yeah. And I think that's a real joy and, you know, that's something that I've, I've – have always thought about you like you could easily be threatened by what we're doing because you know we're kind of in similar yeah. fields and areas and same with us we could be threatened by you because you're you look like you're doing an amazing job with everything that you do um and we're so inspired by the work that you're doing but you know that the fact that we get to come together and yeah. share that and go lift each other up and go yeah i want to learn from you and i want to give back to you and support like I just love that so yeah it's such a joy I feel incredibly privileged to be able to work with Paul every day and you know to to work with yourself um in different capacities as well so yeah well thank you I mean that was about Paula but I just want to say thank you for your words and I do think the abundance mindset and that there is enough we are enough and there is enough yes. i think it's such an important way it's not just one woman seat at the table no. or one speaker or one podcast or one 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 like it's just yeah why is there not enough room for us all which i actually there believe is. there is yeah mm-hmm. and it's just being aware of that in the dialogue isn't it but maybe mm-hmm. we'll touch on that a little bit more but thank you for that and 
Paula, <laughs> your right of reply. Oh. Um, <laughs> you can I'm you can respond you, in any way. Take I'm a glad few deep just breaths. Spoke then because I had to almost stop listening. Oh, maybe <laughs> I shouldn't sorry. have spoken. No, it was <laughs> just so um, it was so beautiful, and it's um, well that just shows another woman offering such beautiful words to another right like I think that's what we are all here to promote the three mm. of us and it's really beautiful <sighs> do you want I to come back to, to let this those one? tears go oh, no it's funny it's, it's actually I find it easier to tell that story than to hear someone very close to me tell it mm. that was much harder I've, I've never experienced that <laughs> so thank you Cherie that was um <sighs> quite an experience I wasn't ready for Oh. Anyway, Wham. Um, <laughs> we'll move on. Thanks. We did say maybe people know their stories enough. How can we make it different? But I, no, thank yeah. you, thank you. Are um, you all right? I mean, yeah, no, no, I can no, edit no. That part out, but no, it, no, no, right? not Do you at need all. A second or no, anything? no, I'm okay. good. I'm good. It was just I was your beautiful words. Um, something I've said to Libby a few times is it's so amazing how, particularly Libby, being in the public eye for so long. You know, people can think she's public property and that mm. they know her story. But now that I know Libby so well, there's so much to her story that she just hasn't shared. And I don't particularly want to be the one to say much, but I I just want to say I think people can be so quick to criticise or judge each other when they don't know mm. the true story of someone. Yeah. And I just every day have more and more love and respect for Libby, not necessarily for her achievements in the pool. It's what she's done from where she's come from that I just find so inspiring. And she's the most humble, generous beautiful loving kind woman I've ever met so supportive and I just feel so this is going to be a cry fest <laughs> we said chief joy right yeah, yeah. oh god let's well, get to joy. the joy <laughs> where's the joy <laughs> oh, um, and I think the beauty of Libby and I working together and the work that we deliver we're very open and vulnerable with each other mm. and I think that's what uh, helps us to create what we have created. We'll often come together on a day to work and almost sit down and spend the first hour <laughs> just <laughs> unpacking whatever's <laughs> going on in our life. Debriefing, yeah. Yeah, and you could think that's such a waste of time, but it actually is almost something that creates content for us. It makes us understand people better. We understand each other better mm. each time we do it. Um, it's an amazing thing. Yeah. So beautiful. And I think when I hear you say about that debrief, it's like you're modelling the behaviour you're, you're kind of teaching to other mm, people. Yeah. So it's all well and good to talk to people about journaling and reflecting and being aware of your inner dialogue mm. and all of the different uh, things that you're teaching, promoting and encouraging and then to not do it yourself. Beautiful. So th thank you so much for sharing that about each other and I think so often we're talking about ourselves but not sharing about each other. So it's mm. beautiful to hear. Um, still keeping on the topic of courage and maybe we're speaking about ourselves here so it might be easier to find an example but I'd love you to share if you'd be willing I guess what are the conversations you have with yourself when you need to find more courage and if there's an example um, recent or in the past where you know it's just easier to opt out or to walk away from something or not go all in we all have that internal dialogue or the the mean critic or whatever it is. So what is it that you do? Because I think it's so important for people to, one, realise it happens to all of us um, probably more often than we, we care to admit, mm. but also that we don't always need, yes, we need other people in our lives, but often the answers we have are within ourselves as well. So, yeah, what's your process? What conversations do you have? And maybe an example if you're willing. Oh, I think I'm doing this almost every day, mm. to be honest. Um, when I'm really struggling with something or if I feel like if it's in the business and I'm feeling like where are we going what are we doing or like Libby said have that panic about god maybe I should just go back and get just a nine to five job mm. where it's safe or something like that I will actually go and lie face down on my yoga mat like it's it's like I need to get really close to the earth again and just feel that I'm supported so I will lie face down on my yoga mat and just almost just breathe it out and come back to 
listening to that inner voice again <clears throat> because I know when I'm in that state, I've, I've become removed from that inner voice and I'm allowing all of those blockages and limiting beliefs to just flood at me. Yeah. And I think just the more you do it, the quicker it is to come back because you can recognise it and you start trusting that voice again and when you trust the voice and you realise you can get back on track, you just keep trusting it more and more because you're getting that feedback that no no you're right you've just you've just lost it again you've just got stressed you've just got overwhelmed there's voices that have come into your head or it might even be a life face down and then calm myself down and think okay I need to go and speak to Cherie or I need to go and speak to a mentor or someone that can actually help me with the problem it's not that it's a limiting belief it's that there's legitimately a problem and I need advice yes yes so I then you're think getting caught in then your I can mind. do something yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and actually actively and intentionally choose someone to speak to about what the problem is amazing yeah. and it's where Libby and I are very good too because mm. we we will always text each other and say oh this voice is back in my head I did it this morning right yeah. like I, t- I text Libby about something again this morning and we've just always been open about doing that and I think we both know not to panic when each other might be on the mm. receiving end of the messages too because we just know like oh yeah she's got that again <laughs> <laughs> she'll come that's good cool. normal. yeah that's fine <laughs> yeah. do you name it do you name your voice or the oh, I have Ooh. before yeah I have had a name I haven't recently though yeah yeah okay do you have a name well I did just recently do a Ben Crow Masterclass and he's talking <gasps> Ooh, about the was good, it good yeah always of <laughs> always yeah. Um, the good wolf, bad wolf yeah. concept. And so, um, you know, if you kind of I, – yeah, mine was the um, the evil queen. I think I love a bit of Disney. So, like, the yeah. evil queen. But then the other one is, like, the queen Beyonce. Like, the queen and then the evil queen. So, Ooh, the good that. voice for me is, like, when you're feeling so empowered, you know, imagine Beyonce. And then, yeah, Queen Bee. And then the evil the evil queen is just mm. when it's just nasty mm. and – the kind mm. of conversation you need to ignore or, mm. or thank thank an override with mm. queen bee over here yeah yeah i went through a phase where i gave mine an actual name i think it was like raquel or something <laughs> <laughs> just the, like no raquel raquel's back. <laughs> she's back she's back she needs to get out <laughs> Oh. Do you have a name? No, you I don't. Name. Mine's just an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Yeah, yeah it, it works. works. It works. Um, yeah, I don't know. For me, uh, it's easy. It's really easy for me to draw on experiences from when I was swimming. Yeah. Um, because you have to, on some level, have – not some level. You have to have an ego when you are an athlete, right? You have to – believe that you have the potential to be the best in the world or at least amongst the best best in the world to be training 35 hours a week for you know 50 weeks a year for the better part of a decade Mm. (laughs) it's a pretty intense commitment yeah it's it's a huge commitment and it's a huge um hugely intense focused environment to live life in but having said that you know, I had deep-seated um, uh, self-worth issues, which, you know, probably contributed to why I wanted to be one of the best in the world because then I would be enough. Uh, so for me, when I was feeling flat or, you know, feeling like I wasn't progressing and, and getting better in training, I really had to focus on my why, which, uh, you know, Ben Crow talks yeah. a lot about is connecting with your why um and then also something that we talk about a lot and that we kind of, I kind of developed through my swimming is is my power phrase so i literally have what's your power phrase yeah. on my list to ask yeah. you both yeah. yeah so the power phrase is such a powerful tool because it's just it's it's telling your brain what to think basically mm. and so you know the power phrase for me particularly was powerful during competition which is usually when my mind found it very difficult to switch out of the what if um scenarios so you know what if i slip off the blocks what if i don't win what if i don't qualify for this australian team what if i don't do a personal best time you know what if i have to do an interview and i've just come third uh, <laughs> not made the team in that event. They're like these are all the things that would start to play out in my mind. So when I was in competition, from the moment I got to the pool, you know, to the moment that I, you know, took off off the blocks for for the race, it was just 
constantly repeating my power phrase. So I'm strong, I'm fit, I'm healthy, therefore I'm fast. No doubts, no regrets, I'm just here to have fun. Um, and that that was such a brilliant tool for me. I mean, there's not – it's fascinating because there's not a lot of tools that I learnt when I was swimming in terms of that sort of stuff, like, you know, maybe a little bit of breathing, like breathe the blue air in and the red air out. <laughs> um, but that's pretty much it. And then the power phrase, and that's the one that I've continued to use. But the the work that I've done with Paula and the, the things that I've learnt through doing my own yoga teacher med- um, training, like I just wish I had those tools when I was, when I was swimming. But – you know, now my power phrase is a little bit more simple. Again, I don't know if you can bleep it out. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Thanks for the warning. (laughs) My power phrase at the moment is let's fucking go because, like, let's go. Like, you just got to kind of keep going and life is hard but there's such a joy in the grind. Like, I – and this might be a bit – is it sadistic? We want to inflict pain on your health. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, it, it, there is joy in that grind. I, I love that. I love the joy of pushing yourself further than you thought you could go yeah. and putting more on the line than you thought was actually possible. And you can do that every single day and that's going to look different every single day. But, yeah, LFG is where I'm at right now. Yes, LFG. That's the uh, version for your kids. Yes. Or just <laughs> let's go <laughs> with my, a very different tone. I have <laughs> – my, um, my power phrase is on a bracelet at the moment. My eight-year-old, almost eight-year-old can read, which I – you which is like why is the, why is the f word on your bracelet i'm like oh okay ah uh, that modeling behavior thing i think andy's got this um singlet from lskd one of their core values they've got them on their shirts and one is um move fast and break shit and chloe did the same the other day she goes dad what does that word say i'm like oh, oh no, no. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, it started as uh, i love that i love the power phrase what's your power phrase paula Trust and allow. Trust and allow. Much more PC. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Just get that tattered wherever you want. It won't offend. Yeah, yeah, no, that's safe. (laughs) PC. (laughs) Very powerful though, the trust and allow. Very hard to do. Is there more? Can you tell us more about it? Uh, It goes back to what we were talking about before, just trusting that inner voice. So when I have those moments of, I can't do this, I'm going to go and just get a job. (laughs) I'm like, no. Trust and allow. Just trust it. Um, I think one of the things that comes up in our conversation, say in some of the workshops we do, we talk about emotional intelligence and and leading with courage and those, I'm going to say in inverted commas, soft skills because there's Mm. nothing soft about them, the human skills. Um, One of the things I often will ask is, okay, when people are in primary school or in school who learn about emotional literacy, who learn Mm. about emotional regulation, and no one puts their hand up, Um, well, very, very rarely, maybe someone who's in their early 20s. And then the reality now is I think, you know, if, Paula, your kids are a bit older than Libby's and mine, but, you know, we've got young kids in school now and then in high school, in primary school, learning about emotions and emotional Mm. regulation. Um, Only just yesterday, the latest Bluey episode, have you seen it? No. (laughs) It's all about emotions and bingo gets sad and then they learn about taking the anger and the sadness out and throwing it away. And so it's just all about acknowledging and accepting your emotion. And I think where I'm leading to with this is about that inner voice because I love when you're saying about the inner voice and the internal dialogue. Both of you are yoga teachers. You've done years and hours and hours um, of experience. You know, if someone who's starting off and like, yeah, I keep hearing about this, but I don't know um, where do I even start with that? What are some practical practices for people to be aware of that internal dialogue? Because it's how we're wired. We've all got it Mm. um, and it's just managing it and, and accepting it and seeing it and understanding what it is. So, yes, people more on the earlier end of that journey, what advice would you give? Mm, I think just starting with really basic breathing exercises where um, mindfulness is encouraged, so just present moment awareness and being aware of any thoughts that are on your mind in that current moment. I think that's a really simple thing that everyone can do. It's just accessible in an instant. So just sitting, breathing, following your breath for a minute and what's the first thought that comes into your mind that takes you away from the breath and that's immediately recognising a thought that's there. Yeah, simple but mm. and powerful, not mm. but, simple and powerful. And I think really importantly is 
having a curious mindset. Mm. So I think a lot of people would listen to Paula go, oh, breathing for a minute. What is that actually going to do? It's not going to do anything for me. That's not going to change my life. It's not going to turn my life around. It's not going to change my life circumstances. And none of these tools that, you know, we're talking about or that you're going to talk about on future podcasts are going to change your life circumstances necessarily. But it helps you navigate them. It helps you cope. It helps you um, have the bandwidth to deal with the stress and the anxiety or the depression or, you know, the self-loathing or the shame spirals that probably we all experience at some point, right? Yeah. Um, so, course. yeah. And, and I think once you are able to come from it at, as curiosity or as Paula and I like to say, running the experiment, like you start to recognise, oh, that's an interesting thought. I do often think that I'm a not a very nice person or that I'm not good enough or and that's why I'm not putting myself forward for that promotion at work or that's why I'm not going after that goal or that's why you know it's always hurtful when my mum says this to me you know it's you start to understand the way that you're thinking see the patterns you see the patterns yeah Yeah. Yeah. you start to and and rather than it coming from a judgmental place It's curious as all hail Ted Lasso. You know, it's all about curiosity Mm. rather than being judgmental and that's for people outside of ourselves but certainly I think almost most importantly is for ourselves as well. Yeah, absolutely. And And then it just provides that opportunity to create space between what the thought is and who you are so you don't become the thought. Yes. I'm not a bad person. I can just sit back and see that that's just a thought that my brain is just spitting out. Yeah, and it sounds uh, like what I find really interesting is, it, say, in the corporate world, if people have looked into this for themselves, the, the language is familiar and, and possibly get it. Sometimes it sounds so... Woo-woo? Fl- <laughs> yeah, yeah, it can, it can. And I think, like, you are not the thought. It's so true. And then when, I don't know about for you guys, I just see it so much then as a parent. When I look at it through the eyes of my daughter is that when the behaviour is bad, she's not a bad kid, the Mm. behaviour is bad and that absolute distinction and how we speak to young people or our, you know, our own children or people in our lives with so much kindness and compassion yet then the way we speak to ourselves, Mm. we, we, unless we're really mindful and really intentional, it's Mm. so easy to forget to have the same kind of tone or the curiosity, Mm. um, see what's underneath or behind the behaviour. But, yeah, so and then we just so harsh on ourselves and so Mm. critical all the time but it's just the loop or the pattern then that is just normal and you i don't know how many people go never speak to someone else the way you you wouldn't have any friends if we we spoke to everybody else the way that we speak to ourselves yeah (laughs) Yeah. we would have nobody (laughs) no and i think that's that when we talk about the thought and you are not the thought how Mm. there's nothing woo woo about it it's actually quite liberating and so empowering to go oh no my behavior and who i am are completely different entities um but yeah i think it's a practice so what are your daily practices Mm. what are your non-negotiable current day daily practices um mine do change depending on what i need but i think that takes time to work out what you need and to become your own teacher Mm -hmm. um but i am very big on getting sleep I'm sorry to oh. new parents, Libby. I feel oh, bad saying this in front of you. <laughs> but I'm I mean, just... It's hurtful, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in that phase of life where it's you are able to get sleep, mm. for me, I need seven to eight hours sleep every night and I will get that. But that's um, what research st- studies yeah, say, and right? it does. And yeah. I just know my physical body yeah. is at prime when I get that. And if I get less than that... I'm snappy and I'm stressed and mm. all of the, you know, the negative thoughts will come. So sleep is always my number one. Um, I get up in the morning and I'll always write in my journal, even if it's like one minute. It's just to keep the habit going. So it's almost like that atomic habits, you know, yes. James Clear, mm. just keep that habit going. Even if it's literally one word, I'll write in that. Um, and I will exercise nearly every day. Beautiful. So they're they're my non negotiables, and then I try to do some form of meditation. But you know that I may skip days. Mm. But yeah, sleep, um, writing in my journal—that's just been a 
this year I've really started doing that every um, every day just as a new habit. And don't you have something at the top of every page? I or, do. Yeah, I write at the top of every page. It's going to be an amazing day. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I've seen posts just, of you doing that. I'm like, yeah. yes, just that. Um, I've literally done it every day this year. Focus. Yeah. And that's self-talk, right? Yeah, it, it is. is. It's just training your brain to look for the positive, to yeah. always scan for the positive. So mm. even on – I've had some really – you know, I've had a friend pass away this year. I still got up and I wrote it in my journal because – you know, from experience, having a, a husband pass away, you there there is always something good that will happen even on that day. It'll be someone coming and physically holding your body. Like it's just training your brain that no matter what happens in a day, there will be something good. Yeah, it is, I think, one of the most underrated things to focus on. Yep. And, you know, you're here, in our our guests on the podcast so I don't want to turn this about me uh but I really resonate I think when Chloe was born at 25 weeks and mm. sitting there in the hospital wondering one if she'll survive and mm. then two when you are in this NICU with seven other families and not every family got to take their baby home yeah. and the risk that you might and I won't go too much more because Luna's no, no, no. six weeks yeah. pregnant right no, now no. but obviously a, a long time before where you are now mm. um and it was it was horrendous and so I remember this nurse said to us every single day write down something that you find that you're grateful for and I, I thought I was a really grateful person before but yeah. it wasn't until you're in that position where things weren't great, where it was so stressful, it was so uncharted and it was horrible. I wouldn't wish it upon, you know, Mm. anyone. Um, And so every day Andy and I would journal, what are we grateful for, what are we grateful for? And there were some days like you really had to scrape the barrel but it was the practice and, yeah, really it's something that even when we came home we would um, text each other every single day because I think we weren't focusing on our relationship then. It was very much about everything else and we would send each other a message a text what I love about you and what I'm grateful about you every day and oh. some days that was really hard to find mm. <laughs> um, but we had to promise to do different things each day and mm. it's so so powerful mm. that um, we're just wiring our brains to look for the good and look for the positive even in the darkest moments so yeah it's mm. my that's my favorite practice and so many of these practices are evidence-based they, I was gonna they, say that, yeah. there's so much research <laughs> yes. that shows that they work they they create happiness or lead to happiness and Libby and I often say that it's it's amazing how people can comment that oh you're you're always such a happy person there's a lot that goes in to being the person Mm. I am and for Libby to be the person she is and same with you Sheree like it's it's a choice it's a choice to be disciplined to do those things Mm. yeah it's it's interesting because if you go to athletes and uh, elite athletes they have to do all of the training and all of nutrition and all of the recovery and everything to to be top of the game Mm. and no one questions that because that's just the practice but then it's interesting when you talk about people's um, vibe or their energy in life or their joy and happiness it's the same you've got to put the time in it's not by default it's Mm. by design isn't Mm. it well and I think uh, just coming from that athlete perspective again I think a lot of people assume you're different somehow do you know what I mean? Like you've... Superhuman. Well, yeah, you've got something in you that's different to what is in other people that has allowed you to do that training or do that work or perform at that level. Yeah. We're not different. We've just put the energy and focus on those things and we've done it every single day, mm. <laughs> multiple times a day for a long time. Everybody's capable of that. It's just finding the things that resonate with you, that land with you, that Mm. allow you to be consistent to grow into the human that you want to grow into. Yeah, it's so true. I just thought you were superhuman. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm not. I'm very ordinary. (laughs) Paula knows. I'm starting to think what sport am I going to win the Olympics at now? (laughs) If she says all of us can do it. Well, I'm going for archery. Perfect. We're going to be doubles tennis doubles players. Tennis. Oh, yeah, yeah. Neither of us have played, no. but I think we'll, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. We just have to want it. <laughs> we have to do it consistently, right? <laughs> I'll write it in my journal. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Awesome. Um, I would love to ask, uh, now I don't know if the segue from you becoming Olympic doubles. Um, <laughs> gold medalist. Gold yes. medalist yeah, gold tennis medalist. players and myself being a gold medal in archery. 
if it's appropriate or inappropriate, we're going to talk about failure. Yeah, great. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect segue. Yeah. Um, no offence, but I probably won't become uh, – but I'm sure you guys could if yeah, you we wanted will. to. <laughs> we will. But I do – I think when we talk about failure, um, there's a recent post actually has just gone absolutely berserk. Yes. Um, and it's one of the – Basketballers. Who, uh, basketballer. Giannis, Michael, yeah. Yeah, about the interviewer asking him, have you seen this? No. So um, – She's not on the Twitter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's in. I mean, can you say because I reckon I'm going to stuff it up. But what do you what do you remember yeah, from so, this? Yeah. So basically, this um, basketballer was in a, a post game press conference, and a journalist who had asked him the exact same question the year before asked the player, "Do you consider this year to be a failure?" And the the basketballer was clearly visibly annoyed. <laughs> At this particular question, he's like, you asked me this last year, you know, Michael Jordan played for 15 years in the NBA and won six championships. Were the other nine years failures or were they setting him up yeah. for that success? Yeah. Were they learning? Were you, you know, growing and, you know, growing as a team and growing mm. as an individual and... I just love that perspective on mm. failure. He basically said that there is no failure in sport and I really believe there's no failure in life yes. either. Like the, it's you either win or you learn or something. You learn. Yeah. yeah. Yes, thank you. And and it's just gone viral because yeah. I think everyone's going, yes, amen, like and mm. high five to that. One, the courage for him to actually just call the guy out and be like, seriously. Mm. Um, but just that reminder, like I'm convinced that our attitude toward failure or our relationship with failure like actually determines how far we go in life because I mm. think it's the things we don't try because we're too afraid of failing or what even failing means. And we were talking about it with our team um, this morning and I was saying, oh, you know, I remember on a very different level, not... not um, you know, world-class sport. But I remember my first marriage not working out and I remember someone saying or asking me about my failed marriage mm. and how it had failed. That's and nice. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, then you know, if I reflect on it, how often I was saying, oh, I failed, like I'd failed, the marriage had failed, what a failure, et cetera, et cetera. And it wasn't until I think I went to Tony Robbins like a year after I'd gotten divorced and talked about failure and it's, there is no failure, there's just experiences. Mm. And I'm like, well, yeah, okay, this is resonating. And so to change that dialogue in something so simple, um, a big moment in my life is something so simple. And then I think about all those other, you know, near misses or learns or the things you tried that really didn't go to plan, but gives you the gift in return. So what I'd love is would you guys share from your perspectives, what's a failure? Or you could talk yeah. multiple, but, you know, have you had one? I'm pretty sure <laughs> we're, we're all good with that. Um, but what's a failure for you? Work, life, sport? parenting yeah career whatever it may be yeah so for for me i mean it's really again it's really easy to talk to the the sporting stuff but and you know there was bloody thousand <laughs> of those failures um for me you know a silver medal in the 100 meters freestyle in beijing when i was the world record holder and current world champion um to, to come second by 0.04 of a second was a pretty deep cut <laughs> in my soul oh. uh, at the time. But I think f more specifically in life after sport, I have been searching and seeking my passion outside of sport for the better part of a decade now because I've been out of the sport for – I've been re retired for 10 years this year. And – so I, it's in, I, I just wanted to be great at something immediately. <laughs> and then you start to realise that it took me 20 years to be great at swimming. Uh, it took me 20 years to be the best in the world there. And, you know, not to say that I'm going to be the best in the world in whatever I do post-sport, but... Let's fucking go, Libby. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Oh, yes. <laughs> I love it. So much. Um, but yeah, no, this is the thing. Like I had to work out what my passion was. Like swimming 
it was not easy by any stretch of the imagination. It was really hard. It was a grind a lot of the time, but I loved it and I was passionate about it and I wanted to do it every single day, even on the days that it was hard and I didn't want to get out of bed and it was cold and raining and all of those sorts of things. But, you know, it, it's been a, a really long process and a lot of multiple failures, you know. I, I started... Uh, doing some television work and I realised I hated doing television work and then I was in a marketing and technology um, – sorry, I was in a marketing and sales role in a startup technology company. I still don't know what they sell. <laughs> <laughs> I did that for three years. I remember years. reading about that in your biography, in your yeah. autobiography, and I was like, oh, okay, I can see why you didn't stay there too long. <laughs> yeah. Like I still don't know what they do. not your passion. <laughs> Um, and you know and then I had postnatal depression after the birth of my first daughter and then I tried I dabbled in um, radio and then that didn't work out because I realized that radio wasn't for me and it, it's those chance meetings and those you know different little conversations that led me to starting a podcast initially, talking to athletes, retired athletes about their life and their transition into life after sport. And then, you know, a, a year later starting the the health and wellness business with Paula and now I've got two podcasts and I've got an online health and wellness business and I'm getting to talk every day about mental health and I'm able to talk every day about helping people find their passion and, you know, lifting women up in ways that I don't think we have been supported ever. And that for me, like, if, if not for all of those experiences, if not for all of the experiences through swimming, through my childhood, through, you know, 14 years of study, continuous study at university and still no degree, you know, <laughs> multiple career, op- uh, different opportunities. Like if it weren't for all of those elements, I would not be sitting here with yourself and Paula talking about getting to do my dream work. Yeah. It's so glad that you moved on from that tech company. <laughs> <laughs> me too. I mean, they were great. Don't no, get me no, wrong. No, no, nothing wrong with them. Tech nothing. nerds are my, you, my people. <laughs> it's, it's, it's maybe just not your fit. Not them. Nothing wrong with no. them. But uh, it's just incredible. I think um, there's a podcast episode that I listened to you on with The Imperfects. Yes. And um, that really moved something in me. I think listening to that, just how raw and honest that was. It was deep and Thank recommend you. if people haven't listened they've got to listen it was so powerful and then um I might have been like the loudest cheering person at TEDx Brisbane for you <laughs> <laughs> um and again I think listening to I don't think that's been released yet Not but yet. I think it's coming I yeah, can see the, the, the talks coming at the moment yeah um but speaking about and I hadn't heard you speak about this before around um girls and women in sport and their bodies and how we speak about females bodies and yeah. how it's no one's right except for maybe Us. the coach to an extent maybe the coach yeah if, if you're an elite athlete yeah if it's elite but <laughs> yeah. not when they're 12 down nope. at um, the local netball and yeah and that was fascinating and I think then listening to what you've just said about your journey mm. those conversations are going to change people's lives and Thank change you. the way people I remember coming that TEDx one and going everyone needs to hear this every parent every coach every person every kid they all need to hear this mm-hmm. and, yeah, it's such powerful, powerful work. So thank goodness that radio yeah. and all those things didn't work. Well, no, they did, they did. They no. just brought you here. Correct. They absolutely worked. Correct. And it's a, it's a conversation that Paula and I have a lot actually is who inspires us because mm. Paula's like, I don't know who inspires me. I don't know what inspires me. And it's something that I've really had to kind of mull over for quite a long period of time but I've realised that – because people might look at my work and go, that's random, like podcasts and then a health and wellness business, like how does that all come together? But what I think my purpose is in this world is to communicate impactful, meaningful conversations around mental health and lifting each other up. Mm. And that comes in the forms of, of what I'm doing. And, yeah, it's really nice to be able to do that and not be like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, no, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. This is where I need to be. Yeah. Yeah. So great. So great. Thank you. Thank you. Paula, for you, 
the original question around failure. So what are some of the failures for you? And I guess what have you taken from them? How has it led you to where you are now? Yeah, it's almost the same answer as Libby really just substitute a different story in, right? Um, and, and like we've said, it's you've almost got to change what our now mindset around failure is to even answer that question. Yes, yes. It's actually hard to even ask it because I feel yeah. a bit like, oh, I, that doesn't actually align with what I align. mean. But I think yeah, sometimes I in the common vernacular people yes. are saying that. But what are those moments yeah, that have yeah. led you to hear that weren't always easy? Yeah, I mean... It's funny now that we have this online business where we're teaching all of the tools around sleep and mindfulness and meditation and healthy eating, exercise, all of that. Like after my husband died, I had horrendous coping skills, you know. I would drink and I would go out and do all of the forms of distraction. I chose them all (laughs) at some point. I've done them all. Not just one of them. (laughs) All of them. I did all of them. (laughs) Why not mix it up? (laughs) Um, and it wasn't until and you know this is probably then where I often start the keynote speech that you probably heard I can't remember actually what I spoke about when you were there but it would have been along those lines perhaps of you just then get sick of your own shit and I knew that Mm. this wasn't who I was it wasn't even close to any kind of purpose or what I'm supposed to be doing in the world and um, you know went down the path of trying to find people that can actually help me and get me back to who I am which led to me doing my yoga teacher training and doing a pilgrimage in India and my health coaching qualification and all of those things that have now given me life experience as well as qualifications in those areas so that I can be the person to support people through their own healing journey or just finding purpose or navigating big life experiences because I've experienced some pretty shitty stuff. Mm. Um, without holding judgment for someone that sits in front of me saying I'm drinking too much or I'm this or I'm that. Mm. I'm like, yeah, I've done that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I Been get there. it. It's fine. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Tell us about um, India. Can you give us some context about going on your pilgrimage? Because mm. uh, I think that shows so much about um, trusting the inner voice and going mm. for things, but even when it sometimes – it doesn't always feel like, oh, others may, I'm going to put in inverted commas, the shoulds. And yeah, um, yeah can you tell us a little mm, bit about that? I've obviously that? told you that story. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I um, I was, I just had the opportunity to go over my, my yoga teacher um, was running a pilgrimage over there. So I had done my yoga teacher training and just so much had come up for me that, I just decided that it's what I needed. There was just this inner voice and, of course, all the – my own inner voices came like, oh, should I be taking time away from my kids who are very young at the time, who will look after them? Can I afford to be doing this? And then I thought, I can't afford to not do this. I need to be better for them. I need to be better for me. Um, but, yeah, I got a lot of um, flack and comments from, you know – Certain people around me, certain people that were very close to me, um, had some very difficult conversations. Give and me almost names and numbers <laughs> that I will go to. <laughs> I, not a joke. Not a joke. <laughs> You'll tell me off, <laughs> off offline. Yeah. The hard thing is about listening to your own voice. It can be so hard because you have this deep inner voice and inner teacher trying to guide you towards where you need to go. And you then, at your lowest point, have to fight to follow your own inner voice knowing that that's actually what's going to make you better. So I think going back to that first question you asked about courage, that is probably the most courageous thing I've done to actually probably at a very weak emotionally, mentally, even physically actually, I was very skinny back then, time in my life to be able to go, this is what I need and I'm going to shut out all the noise I'm going to trust that everyone who is meant to be in my life will be there when I come back. Yeah. And um, however many years on from that now, there's no one that would say to me that was a irresponsible bad decision. It's completely the opposite. Wow, that was completely transformative for you. You are just who you're supposed to be now. And I think yeah. that also speaks to, you know, the... I think we all have that inner knowing, like when we're needing to make big life decisions and we're having to make um, commitments or choices around our lives that might be seen as controversial for whatever reason Mm. people might have judgment around it. 
but we we often have that immediate knowing mm. and then all of the noise comes and then all of the judgments come whether that's from within or from external sources and that's where yeah as you said Paul I think that's where the courage lies is mm. being able to trust mm. that initial knowing yes mm. yes yeah. and walk into it even when it feels a bit of discomfort Mm. Um, because then, yeah, those voices, don't they just start, I don't know, they're tainted by everyone else's shoulds but usually those voices aren't coming from people's abundance either. They're often coming from other people's fears, other people's shame, other people's stories. Well, I couldn't do that. Yeah, Yeah. or how dare that that woman, that mother be apart from their children, Mm. how how selfish Mm. and those words and and I think I get goosebumps in it. I find it incredibly um, moving to think about them. People saying now you're the person that you need to be and then Mm. the version of yourself as a mum for your kids Mm. also going through a lot too. Mm. It's just so powerful. And I think, you know, Libby, you've spoken about it in your book when I've read your book about with your postnatal and then Mm. looking after you and as women, as business owners, as mums, as and there'll be men listening to this too, I'm sure. Um, But So it's not just women but it's so important that we – have to have to prioritize ourselves mm. must it's absolutely essential and i think it's sounding so cliche but it's almost asking yourself well what did i do for me what did i do for me today in those daily practices or the uh, the cup feeling of being around people that make you smile mm. or laugh or just doing something because i don't know i think we shy away from um doing that loudly i think people almost do it quietly because they feel maybe i'll be judged and yeah it's just so important well and i think that's it, it, it's our perspective of what self-care looks like, right? Yes. Like most people go, oh, self-care is going to get a facial or having a massage for an hour. And self-care is taking five deep breaths. Yes. Mm. <laughs> you or know? a shower. Or, yeah. Or, or, yeah, we Literally. always talk about our, our <laughs> candlelight shower. shower. Like mm. it just it's moments. Yes. It's taking those moments and acknowledging, oh, that was a really hard situation. It's going to take a second to breathe yeah and before I move on for the rest of my day and I think none of us are doing that enough no and as a society I mean I think you know we're on in on the verge or if not in the middle of a mental health crisis in so many different ways and people are struggling and we need to find really simple solutions that we can implement every single day multiple times a day to be able to come through that Yes, for ourselves and then also give others in our world, whether it's at work or in our families, the space for that for themselves too. And permission. Yeah. Yeah, and if we're not doing it, we have to ask ourselves why and actually go down that path of saying, what's the voice that's telling me I'm not? Is it that my parents never took time to rest or is it that my friends will judge me or do I feel guilty because I'm taking time and my husband's at home? Like yeah. what is it that's stopping you? What's the barrier? Yes, yes. And I think just recently having surgery and being told you just need to lie down and do nothing mm. and they're like... There <laughs> oh, was by who? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe by Paula. <laughs> may or may not have been coaching me through that emergency coaching call (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) there was one of those Paula I think I might have come back to work a little too uh too early could you let me know and she's like I think you answered that that I'm like tell me about that Uh, Cherie (laughs) tell me about the tears you have right now and why you need my advice but I remember just like lying on the couch and feeling guilty and Mm. after a week or two thinking oh I've got so much downtime so much I could be doing and then the other voice going yeah watching madam secretary it's just okay like you are recovering yeah but it's yeah it's critical i think yeah i think giving um permission yeah sorry and um i think it's giving permission and also there's a question do you know the coaching habit the book the coaching habit Um, yeah there's a great question in there that i've started using this on myself i think yeah we talk about it for people to learn when they're coaching and having conversations but i'm asking myself if i say yes to this what am i saying no to or the other way around whichever way but if i'm saying yes to not having lunch today well what am I saying no to for myself? Or if I'm not going to go and have that time out, am I saying yes to being burnt out? Like yeah. it's just asking ourselves every time because it's a balance, isn't yeah. it? You know, there's yeah. an impact. If if I do this, what impact am I going to have? Am I consciously choosing that? I think I actually stuffed the question up. I think it's if I say yes to this. No, no, that was it perfect. It is yes yeah, yeah. to then to the no? Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, tr- yeah, it's pretty powerful. If I say yes to this, what am I, I saying, saying no, no to? to? 
Yeah. Or if I'm saying yes to someone else, am I saying no to myself? Yes, yes. Yeah. So that's where it helps with our boundaries mm. and, yeah, the energy that we need. So, so powerful. Um, I thought I'm going to have one last question. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Is there, is there any question that you thought I would ask that I should ask that I haven't asked? No, these are – no. <laughs> I'm have confused. Have I done okay? <laughs> what the <laughs> – What is she asking? Uh, no, you know that whole um, – if there was one thing you didn't want me to ask you about today, what would it be? Oh, um, no, I'm an open but book. But I think so we've I, gone there. Yeah, yeah, okay. I answer everything. Good. Yeah, I think it's 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 a clean. She's it's got leaky easy boundaries. One. <laughs> They're so leaky. Whoa, just leaking We're working away. on that. <laughs> non stop Work leaking. in progress. <laughs> oh gosh, in leaky a couple boy. of weeks, there's all sorts of leaks. Oh, I've just... given myself a week of maternity leave. That's enough, right? <laughs> You're not leaking, are you? <laughs> I mean, oh, right goodness. now. Oh goodness. <laughs> This is taking me back. Um, okay. So I'm going to ask one last question. And it is, if you were to create like a Hallmark card that was designed by you with your favourite quote or um, a piece of advice on we the love front. Quotes. Yes. We do love yes. quotes. I'm almost guessing, guessing one, Ooh. like the answer, but we'll see how you go. Maybe... You're not that predictable, but we'll see. Is this us together? Yeah, we'll either. I think why we don't you do it individual? Together, you yeah. could do a unlocking potential one. You could do it individually. But what is on the front of that Hallmark card? You go. We've got two, I think. Mm. Well, the, one of them that we love is you can't pour for an, from an empty cup. Mm-hmm. You give from the overflow. Quite relevant to our mm. conversation. Very much so. Now. Yeah, and I I find that. Women don't know what full means, let alone overflowing. Mm. That is the problem. They don't know what a baseline of a full cup feels like in their body. Yeah, I think that is very fair because mm. I think we know when we're at burnout you know when we're at or burnout. close to burnout yeah. rather It's than like abundance. we just come above the red and that's sort of where we oh, hang out. I'm, getting a, I'm just getting a little bit of eye contact I'm from like, Paula. Staring <laughs> directly like, into um, Sheree's eyes. I'm very aware of the conversations I have been coaching you through. Into your soul, <laughs> Sheree. <Ow. laughs> she just shrunk. <laughs> okay, that's it. Bye. <laughs> and we're done. Uh, so true. So true. Yeah. Mm. So is that the unlocking potential quote now? Yeah. I'm like, I've got the flush. Do you have flush. a personal one? I wouldn't say I do at the moment. Mm. Okay. Do you? I Well, I have two, like, other than the you can't um, pour from an empty cup because I think that is just so relevant to particularly women but everybody at this point in life. Um, but my two ones from swimming that I think are still relevant for me today is um, they never said it would be easy. They just said it would be worth it. Classic, like, athlete. Classic athlete. <laughs> Jeez, Libby. Let's fucking go for an adventure. <laughs> LFG. LFG, baby. Um, but the other one is um, pace. It doesn't mean to be in a place of no noise, hard work or um, disruption, but it means to be in the midst of all of those things but still be calm in your heart. Yes. And I think that... It's that, a Buddhist expression. Yeah, yeah. I think... It, <laughs> I think because of what we do with Paula and I do for our work, people assume that that then makes your life perfect. Mm. And it's not, you know, there's going, life is hard. Like there are so many challenges that we all face in different ways, shapes and forms, whether it be, you know, car accidents or illness or aging parents or sick children, you know, things that you just, that blindside you, right? Mm. That you just have, you can't prepare for or plan for, but it, those things will happen but there is still the ability in those moments to be calm in your heart yeah um and i just really like that quote Mm. i love that it's actually in my living room i've got that Mm. in a a stone kind of photo thing in my living room amazing yes i love it i love it use it in our workshops yeah Yeah. Yeah. so so true and life is chaotic and it's hectic and 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 you can feel the we talk about how health and wellness is actually messy you know it's not a static thing that we achieve it fluctuates and it's messy and it's not it's not perfect yet we can still find the joy find the calm and the Mm -hmm. greatness i thought one thing you're going to say and i reckon maybe it's the some words to wrap it up on but is that you are enough because i i think you wrote that in the book that we handed out at ignite last year and I just, it's so powerful. Yeah. Like there's such simple words for every human. Like you are enough. Yeah. yeah. You're enough. Because most of us 
feel like we're not. <laughs> yeah, and to say that to yourself, that's a beautiful thing to do as well. Thank, Thank you, you both oh, so, much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's yeah. amazing. Absolutely blessed to have you in my life and, and our listeners' ears and thank you for being here. Thank you Absolute for having pleasure. us. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on the Lead with Courage podcast. We illuminate leadership and it's our mission to inspire and grow the leaders of today to create a better tomorrow. We hope and trust that this episode has given you some insights and joy to empower you to live your biggest, best life. If you did enjoy the episode, we'd be so grateful for you to rate and share wherever you listen to this podcast. Illuminate Leadership is not a licensed mental health service or a substitute for professional mental health advice, treatment or assessment. Any conversation in this podcast is general in nature and if you're struggling, please see a healthcare professional or call Lifeline on 131114.